You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. Happy holidays, listeners, and welcome to a special episode of Comics with My Kids. We are spreading the love of comics and nostalgia this holiday season. Logan and I are sitting down today with Lee from the Covert Nerd Podcast and his son, August, to talk about a couple of comics we have introduced our kids to. So without any further ado, I want to go ahead and welcome Lee and his son, August. Guys, thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Hello. So how you guys been? How you, how you getting ramped up for the holiday season? Oh yeah, overeating and everything. <laughs> Having a good time, yeah. Reading some old comics is always fun around the holidays. Oh yeah. Yes, definitely. Just sitting down, eating those, uh, eating those cookies and uh, reading, uh, reading some classic comic books. Yes. Mm-hmm. The books that we picked out, uh, Lee and I have read when we were kids or slightly younger than we are now. Uh, <laughs> And we introduced them to our kids. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn over the turn over to our, our guest Lee in August, so they can talk a little bit about uh, the book that Lee picked out. Sure, uh, Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, it actually came up, Matt, on the last episode. You kind of asked what were some old comics that my kids read, and I reached out to two of my kids, August and Aaron. And August had mentioned Infinity Gauntlet, kind of caught his eye, so I kind of wanted to delve into that a little more so i'll let august kind of take over and let him maybe summarize the story a little bit but then just pass on some memories about what caught it what caught your eye and why you really like the art or just you know sum it up as best you can and, and some interesting things that you liked absolutely i had a ton of fun rereading this book there are so many uh aspects of it that I think click into a lot of the history of Marvel Comics. And I'm going to try to explain it all in a way that is the least boring, uh, (laughs) most positive, and then I'll probably have a couple of snotty comments at the end, just to keep things interesting. The book was written by Jim Starlin, uh, drawn by George Perez, lettered by a guy named Jack Morelli, colored by Max Scheel. This is a team up of classic, wonderful creators. George Perez did, I believe, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Jim Starlin did uh, Death of the New Gods, some Superman, and a whole lot of other great stuff in the history of comics. In a lot of ways, this was like an Avengers Assemble moment in Marvel Comics production. The story itself is pretty simple. Uh, If you've seen the movie, you know what happens. Thanos goes to get what are the, called the infinity gems. And these things are. You probably want to, in fact, if you want, say. Logan can give you every single, every single infinity stone yeah. gem, if it helps. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah, name them real the quick. I'm actually. Yeah, there's the power stone, space stone, time stone, reality stone, and soul stone. And they actually have like uh, different abilities in the comics, which was not in the movie. Uh, they had like some, like the minds, the, I don't think you could read minds in the movie. Yeah, they, they really, they, they really didn't delve into that too much, but yeah, you're right. Yep. All right. Uh, let me go for it. So I'm just going to go over the plot real quick. Uh, Dad, are we going to be like trading off or uh, like talking about it? Yeah, we can. You just go ahead and kind of summarize okay. it the best you can. And then, you know, and then just talk about some of your memories, early memories about it, first impressions. And then yeah. you can, then maybe you can delve into a little bit on the art and stuff, whatever you're comfortable oh, yeah. with. I, I'm going to delve into the art. I'm also interested in talking a bit about the production of the book because I actually looked up a lot oh, okay. about how the book came about. Okay. Um, that's where my snotty comments come from. Uh, all right. <laughs> awesome. But I'm not going to get, okay. So, The Infinity Gauntlet is about Thanos going to collect, after he has collected actually, after he has collected all of the Infinity Gems, he assembles them all and tries to court death herself uh, and win her affections. Eventually um, wiping out half of all life in the universe, 
and getting the attention of all the heroes, all of the gods, and the Korean scroll. Um, this leads to a, a large confrontation and uh, the big superhero blowouts, the big fights you've all expected uh, in these kinds of things. Since it's George Perez, the book is gorgeous. Um, every page is amazing, particularly the layout, the visual construction of each page is so impressive. Uh, there's uh, in page five of issue one, there's this bit where Dr. Strange were in his place and his cape drapes across the page and inside of his cape are panels. And this is the thing that makes this book brilliant for the first uh, four issues until George Perez gets replaced by Ron Lim. But until then, the story is just gorgeous back to back. Mm -hmm. um, there is this, uh, I don't, I, I'm not getting too much into specifics, but in the second issue, there's another page where Thanos is looming over his brother and the light from his gaunt, the gems on his gauntlet cut the page into dozens of different pieces. Yep. And that's just so good. George Perez over and over again hits. He is so good at detailing. He's so good at drawing hundreds, dozens of characters. Each of them look like themselves. They all have their own body types. Their faces express so much emotion. It's incredible. I love every single one of his books. The story itself is pretty fun. Like I said, it's typical epic yep. superhero fare. Yep. They try to get everybody together and they all have to fight. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and it's it's a lot of the big heroes, uh, minus the Fantastic Four and minus the X-Men. Uh, there's a bit of production story behind that, but that comes later. <laughs> okay. Um, Teaser, good. Good job. <laughs> so this is something that, I would, there's a bit of a thing here. There's a lot of things in Marvel that have changed. Uh, a lot of things that haven't. Things that have changed uh, would be like... Uh, who's in the Avengers, uh, Vision being all white back in the old days. Mm -hmm. um, Marvel, and something else that hasn't changed is Marvel has some great talent and that's in this book. Um, I think something that this book lacks is much of any coherent theme or idea. Mm -hmm. There is a theme in the book of this like, Thanos is a nihilist. Um, there's this theme of despair. Uh, all throughout the book in the big fight scene when the heroes go to confront Thanos and he beats them all up. Um, there's this, a lot of this tip, uh, this is a, a story about confronting hopelessness, about trying to overcome great odds and be brave in horrible danger against Thanos, who's this mad titan, mad god, who's going to destroy everything, which is fun. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's everything you'd want in a, in a typical superhero comic. Um, but I think this also comes with an, an issue that I think, I think this comes with a problem that Marvel has had. Uh, they have these big summer crossover events yep. where all of the heroes come in and uh, they all have this big fight. Um, and it's fun. And when you get a great artist, it's a wonderful time but it always leaves me a little bit lacking. You're drawing these heroes from all of these different books and they're all stuffed into this book, but what do the characters in this book actually do? There's a point where Hank Pym shows up for a single page and he never comes back again. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, I think like two to three pages devoted to Wolverine Hulk talking on a, on the, on a roof at one yeah. point. Yeah. That doesn't go anywhere. There's a point, a whole page, a whole page, mind you, they pay for this, for the Kree and scroll, where they're like, well, it's like Kree, actually, I think. And the Kree are like, this, the scrolls are definitely doing something. And they, they fly out. For the life of me, I don't think they do anything in the book. I don't think they even come back. Yeah, um, I think the snap got rid of them, if I remember correctly, but I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> But then why bring them up? I know, I know. <laughs> it, like you said, it, it's, it's a it's a way to get everybody together. Oh. Well, I I think, um, and this is where the snotty remarks come in. Okay. Um, if you go into the production, if you go into how this book was made, um, this was a Silver Surfer story that was going to be, I think, two issues, yeah. according to George Per. Uh, um, no, Jim Starlin. And then uh, Marvel Comics, which was bought out by recently by Ron Perelman at the time. Ron Perelman, a businessman so good that within one year, he went from being worth $19 billion to being worth $4 billion. Regardless, um, 
Perez was told to exploit more of Marvel's intellectual property, their words, not mine. And so he stuffed it with a lot of heroes that weren't even supposed to be there. Uh Whenever the book is about Thanos, Nebula, death, and his brother, whose name I can't remember what the hilarious hairdo. It's wonderful. I think it's Enos or Enos. Enos? Yeah, something like that. Red Hair Man. Yeah. Red Hair Man. Star Star Fox, I think was his name. Is that his name? I think so. Nintendo let him get away with that? Yeah, I think so. (laughs) Yeah. But, I think this was before the uh, Star Star. Yeah, I think it was. Star Fox, yeah, that's before uh, the Star Fox yeah. com. Uh, the the game. Cartoon. All right, I guess game, it might yeah. be. I actually have the game. It's called Starlink. It the game with Star Fox in it. It's actually called Starlink. Well, that's that's the new one. Um. Regardless, uh, this all that part of the book is wonderful, and I love those pages. Thanos is a surprisingly well written character, despite being a bad guy. Um. Like, oh, okay, not despite, he's very fun to read. Yeah. Um, but whenever it leads to all this other stuff, it's cool. It, it really is. But I, I, I think we can demand more of a comic book. I mean, in the age of uh, you've got books these days like Blankets, Moz, or Saga, I think we can demand better than a book that's a little bit cool. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, I mean, I, I, I have a lot, of, uh, a lot of beef with Marvel. Um, I think that this book was used as a jumping off point to sell a whole lot more books. And I think it ruined a really cool story. And I think if we're talking about things that have changed and haven't changed, that's something that hasn't changed. I mean, they're doing it still. Um, I, I, but all of that said, uh, I did enjoy the book. <laughs> cool. What, what, caught have, your, what caught your eye when you first read it, you know, 10 years ago or whenever it was? Oh, um, I mean, my favorite part of the book still is the epic battle between all of the big cosmic entities and Thanos. I think yeah. I just flipped to those pages and stared at them for minutes at a time. And I still do. Yeah. You've got pages where the entire thing is one panel of these people just shooting lasers at each yes. other. I mean, what's cooler than that? I know. Um, it's just very colorful and very well drawn. So colorful. Oh, uh, yeah. Max Scheel? Yeah, Max Scheel did amazing coloring work. Yeah, yeah. From issue one to the last. She, yeah. she was phenomenal. It was very, very vividly colored, in my opinion, for an early 90s comic printed on mm-hmm. a newsprint. It turned out very well. It doesn't bleed. It doesn't no. have, I mean, I'm sure some copies well, did, yeah. but her work doesn't have that consistent bleeding you see in these old books. I know. I know. Yeah. You can see some really bad bleeds on some old stuff where it's way outside the line, but this one didn't at all. So I don't know what they did, but it, whatever it was, it's really uh, good. She's a, she's an actual landscape painter. One thing. Uh, professionally. Oh, really? Huh. Yep. You can, she actually has her stuff in galleries. Oh, okay. Well, well, one thing I was going to mention about Thanos in this and in the storyline where they confront Thanos with the fact that he subconsciously knows he's not worth worthy of the power. And so he subconsciously lets himself be beaten. I thought that was just a good, a good insight on Thanos, which they don't really explore in the movie. No, I, I, I really love how Thanos is written in this book where he has betrayed death like to her face and he's so egotistical. He's not willing to listen to her. He literally destroys her mouthpiece because he doesn't actually, he doesn't want to hear what she says. He wants validation. Yeah. Yeah. He's an incel basically. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I I love how he's written here. It's very interesting. It is. I agree. And then if also sidebar, uh, Matt, uh, then you guys can go ahead and, you know, discuss, but Thanos quest, the <laughs> prequel to this is really good. I r- highly recommend that it's w- written just as well, in my opinion. Yeah. If I remember the, the, the Thanos's quest, that's pretty much all of the infinity war movie. You him, because, yes. Him gathering up all the gems. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So Logan, while Lee and August have been talking, I've been flipping through the, the book. What, what do you think? of the infinity gauntlet as you've been looking over my shoulder at the digital copy um you know i I pointed out a few things that august had mentioned like the the panels and such what do you what what is your opinion what do you think of of some of this is this something that you wouldn't mind reading next i think it looks cool (laughs) 
Did you, have you seen have you seen Infinity War? I assume you have, Logan. I have. Okay. My favorite parts again when they all open up these portals and then just come running through to fight. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you'd like Infinity Gauntlet. It's very well well done, very bright, colorful, easy to read. It's a lot like Secret Wars. Which uh and the nice thing is <laughs> between the two Secret Wars and, and Infinity Gauntlet. Infinity Gauntlet's actually a little shorter. Yeah. It's actually only six issues versus the twelve issue slog <laughs> that you you read earlier. With yeah, that's Secret a Wars. that's a tackle there, Logan. To do twelve issues, yeah, Infinity Gauntlet's yeah, comparatively. I tried to read it, uh, Secret Wars when I was uh, just a little bit older than Logan is, and I still couldn't read it. <laughs> <laughs> Hats off to you, Logan. Well, since we since we we mentioned Secret Wars, let's go ahead and uh, Logan. We're gonna go ahead and we'll dive into Secret Wars real quick. Um, can I tell a little bit about of what you thought of, of the script? I really liked it, and I think I'd give it 10 out of 10 because um, I really liked the art. And my dad pointed out to me that – wait, no, that was a different book. Never mind. <laughs> you're, all, you're all right. Keep going. I'm getting them too confused because right after that, right after Secret Wars, I read another one for – my next podcast, which is the death of Superman. Oh, that's <laughs> so good too. Try not to get too confused. Those are really <laughs> good. Right. Well, at first it starts off, you head into different worlds where you see each superhero and there's this weird dome. And as soon as they look at it, they just start walking forward and they can't stop themselves. It's like something taking control of them. So then when, and as soon as they get into there, they, automatically tar- teleport into this weird circle thing. I believe it's a spaceship. Pretty sure it is. And there's actually a second spaceship. One spaceship has all the bad guys. The other one has all the good guys. And they introduce themselves just as a little recap from them. And actually some of them I didn't even know existed. Which is great for someone who's being introduced to Marvel Comics uh, because they get, it should give you a little rundown of each character. And what was what's really neat about um, the background of the book is that Marvel Secret Wars was actually created by Jim Shooter, who was the editor of the chief at the time, and Mattel uh, Mattel Toys. Oh. Um, just a little more of a background. Mattel wanted um, wanted an action figure license so that they could sell action figures. So they talked to Marvel and said, "Hey, we really like your action. We really like your characters. Let's do like a crossover event or something to sell these toys." So Jim Shooter says, "Yeah, sure, we can do that." And that's actually when the first big crossover oh, yeah. happened. Secret Wars is why every summer we have a big crossover event of every single superhero. Really, I did not know that. That's yeah. awesome. I didn't. Know I that. I also think. This book happened around the same time as Crisis on Infinite Earths, right? Yeah. Wasn't it influenced by that as well? Yep. Um, DC had their, their Crisis on. Uh, it was a, maybe a few months apart from each other. But, you know, so I don't know uh, if it was, <laughs> you know, a one-upmanship or whatever, but Mattel really had okay. a big thing. Because, I mean, they came out with a whole line of Marvel superhero action figures. Um, mm. And, of course, I had a couple of those back when I was a kid, but they never survived. Yeah. So I can't really give them to Logan. For, uh, for for nostalgic <laughs> purposes. Yeah. Oh, well. So, Logan, you told us that, uh, that these heroes got together, the, the villains got together. Where did they go? Uh, so there's this one weird alien called the Beyonder, and he has all these mm-hmm. kind of crazy powers, and he takes a bunch of pieces and stuff and puts it together and creates a world called Battle World. And what did the Beyonder say to the to the, the the superheroes and the villains? He said, "Slay your enemies, and you shall have whatever you want." Hold on, cuckoo cock. Logan, do you have like a favorite? Logan, do you have like a favorite fight scene out of this book? Because I remember I really enjoyed the first one between all the heroes, and I think the Galactus. I think they fought like right like right when they get in Battle World. Uh. Right when they get to Battle World, no, Galactus flies to the Beyonder at the beginning. Yep. You're right. So then he gets You're knocked right out. They don't fight yes. Galactus till towards the end when they meet that when they meet a new superhero that was living on this world. I think. Cuz she didn't show up with them. Her name was Spider-Woman. 
Yeah, it's it's funny. There was there was three characters introduced in into um, Secret Wars, and they never really explained how they got there. There was uh, Titania that um, Doctor Doom helped create. Um, plus, who was the who was the girl that was the fire that like Volcana? Turns, Volcana yes. And there was the lizard. Well, the lizard's Spider Man's um, yeah. arch enemy. He kind of I think he just kind of showed up. He was he was. He didn't start off with the bad guys. In fact, they just found him in the woods when he was talking to wasps. And he actually was not on the bad guy's side, nor the good guys. He was literally attacking the bad guys. Oh, okay. Partway through the book, it it seems like Mattel said, hey, we like this action figure. Can you throw that character in the the story? And then they suddenly (laughs) show up. Suddenly Um, show up all the, yeah. 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 Interesting. The wasp gets lost in the forest and happens to run into him. And they become friends. And just after they become friends, they shoot the wasp and she gets killed. So the lizard keeps on chanting, you killed wasp, attacking. And I think he knocked Bulldozer Uh over. Hmm. And also, one of the funny parts at the beginning, which is the first funny part, um... The thing said, and I'm the Easter Bunny. Who said that? The thing. Oh, that's right. Remember? Yeah, they were doing their their intro. Because... He said, (laughs) we're the Fantastic Four minus the Invisible Woman. Yeah, because Jim Shooter had this policy at Marvel where every every issue was somebody's first issue. So they would always try to find ways to introduce the characters, have them tell them a little bit about themselves. So yeah, I I remember what you're talking about, buddy. Where they they were going through okay. like a, a roll call. Logan, what what's some of your favorite parts of of the Secret Wars that you might want to share with August and Lee? Um, I think one of the cool parts was when uh, Doom lost his armor and you could see half of his body was a skeleton. Yeah, I kind of remember that. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, okay. Well, it wasn't all skeleton. There was still some meat there. <laughs> <laughs> but he never wanted to take off a suit, and I can see why no. now. No, yeah, you're exactly right. You never saw him without his suit on. So just to kind of do a little, a little bit of a, a crossover with um, with your guys' book on the Infinity Gauntlet, Doom was kind of a bad guy in, in Secret Wars. He was He was trying to manipulate galactus he was trying to get the power from um the beyonder so he killed the beyonder mostly but he was hiding and switching between people from people Mm -hmm. so what and the way he got away was by slipping into the master of sound whose name i can't pronounce claw claw (laughs) so i wasn't sure with the w on the end (laughs) since since (laughs) Since, since Logan's great at uh, at running, running me off on the tangents, um, what was what was Doom's role in in Thanos and 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 the Infinity Gauntlet? He really didn't have a lot to do with it. I mean, he of course wanted the Gauntlet, and he and but he really wasn't the a primary player in the Infinity Gauntlet. At least that's to my recollection. He was there. Yeah. Uh, he spends he spends the first couple of issues uh, annoying all of the other superheroes. Yeah, and then he fights everybody and he ruins the plan. And then I think he just gets incinerated by Thanos. And then he, I think he comes back too. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the the fight against Nebula. I believe so. Yeah, because he wanted the power, of course, for himself, but just like he did in Secret Wars. But I don't, you know, obviously. Thanos was the big player in the Infinity Gauntlet. When Doom destroyed the Beyonder, mostly, he got his power. But he didn't get all of it, because at one point he tried to destroy the heroes, but they came back. And he kept on trying to destroy them, but he couldn't. Oh. Yeah, in many ways, Secret Wars is kind of a Doom story. I mean, he becomes the main antagonist for a while, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I've read it. Oh, yeah, he's in it a lot. Yeah. I and just, he I was a doesn't he have an arc near the end where he like gets all the power but he's not satisfied with it, if I remember correctly? Mm, I, I I don't remember. You guys so. have read it more recently. I don't think so, but I haven't yeah, I haven't read it 
been so long. I don't remember. Mm. I'm just kind of flipping through it here though. But yeah, there's Than or not Thanos. Uh, Dr. Doom. Yeah. is a big, he's on, you know, almost every page. So mm -hmm. He's got a lot. Of, I just, a lot of screen time. Remember, I remember a page where it's like, I think it's him and he has all of his uh, skin back because he has the power now. Yeah. And I believe he also gives Thing his uh, regular skin back, yes. which is what he's always wanted. Yep. To, to control. No, no? Because no. at first he keeps on turning to Ben to Stone, to Ben to Stone. But when he's about to turn to Ben the third time, he somehow reverses it that nobody knows how and then became the thing. Oh. oh, okay. So then he knew how to do it. So for some odd reason, wait, no, I know why. He stayed at the battle world. Yes, without his rock skin. Because hmm. he, he could change from Ben to rock, from Ben to rock, you get the point. Yeah, so hmm. for some odd reason, whatever radiation is affecting battle world, it allowed, it allowed Ben to transform. Reed Richards could never, never do. I you know the biggest yep. problem, the big, the big promise that Reed told um, Ben was, "I'll get you back to normal." Uh, you know, because mm -hmm. Johnny Storm, Sue Storm, and 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 Reed, they could all go back to a, a human state. But poor Ben yeah. was forever locked in this in this orange rock. So at the end of the book, um, spoilers, uh, <laughs> big spoilers for anyone who hasn't read the book in in you know so. almost thirty years now. Um, ben stays behind because he has the ability to become human again and okay. they need, and they need someone to stay behind in order to push the button to transport everybody back to back. The earth. Yep. And they need to be the fantastic four. So they need another person. So to replace, to replace Ben, she Hulk comes in, which I can yep. understand why you get rid of a strong guy and replace with a strong guy. Or in yeah. this case, yeah. strong woman, strong woman. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh yeah, this has that iconic panel with, with uh, Doctor Doom getting blasted with all that energy, and he's getting, yeah, yeah, okay, I kind of remember that now. And with the power of the Beyonder, you were so strong that towards the beginning of the book, he, he tells Ultron to disintegrate one of the guys on their side, so he does. And then towards the end of the book, that guy actually comes back. He recreates a ghostly form of him. Of the guy that he disintegrated, which is weird. Speaking of, um, speaking of, uh, wait, so Ultron was, I, I don't even remember Ultron being in this book. Oh, yeah. It's been odd. He's, yeah. he's into that a lot. Uh, but speaking of iconic art, um, there's also the cover of Spider Man getting the black suit for the first time. Yeah, yes. yes. Uh, the he goes symbiote into this suit. machine mm. and um, gets a little black ball that he touches mm -hmm. and it goes up his arm. So I, I kind of haven't told Logan this about the black suit. I might have mentioned it to him, but yes. It's alive. You said that. And yeah. you got to this other guy, you said. Oh, he doesn't know what it is. <laughs> I so, heard that. <laughs> so uh. we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll reveal to Logan what the black suit, how important the black suit comes in in future issues of, of Spider-Man, particularly uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 300. Wait, yeah. 300? Yes. I, I was going to... I'm glad you said that I was about to... <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. So, Logan, you remember that... You remember the Spider-Man movie we saw called Venom? Nah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> that black suit becomes the Venom character. So that issue in that book there is the first appearance of the symbiotic black suit that becomes Venom. You said at one point that... In the microphone, please. You said that one point Spider-Man got the suit off of him. How did he get it off since it was alive and it was alive on him? That would have been hard to get off. How did he do it? Well, <laughs> that's a long story arc that I could probably reserve for another episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That could take up a lot of time if we want to get into that. But yeah, that's the iconic cover. I mean, that's huge. My art teacher, Fernando Ruiz, um, would always tell us the story of like how the the suit came out and all the kids on the playground were talking about it every day and he would like always go to the comic show because he was alive when it was happening um i was just I, it's it is like just such a revolutionary moment um we wouldn't have venom we wouldn't have the symbiote craze of the 90s carnage it all it all comes back 
and I and I if I remember correctly, it wasn't even a thing. I think it was just to sell a toy. It wasn't yeah. even meant to be a big deal at the time. Yeah, I don't think it's at least in the story, it's not revealed that it's a symbiote. I think that was retconned later. And you know what? Yeah. After I read this, I realized something. So I actually I have an action figure of Venom, but up till now I never realized that's not Venom. That's just Spider Man wearing a black suit. Because Venom oh. is way bigger. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Well, I yeah, never realized yeah. he's got the big tongue. Yeah, that's cool. Huh. Well, since we're talking about Spider Man and and a character, um, you guys had mentioned that Thanos was a character you liked in in the Infinity Gauntlet. What other character, you know? superhero or villain did you did you like in the infinity gauntlet i actually think uh nebula was a very underutilized character in the infinity mm -hmm. gauntlet storyline itself um because she's uh she's like um what's a a good word for this uh tortured by thanos for like months on end and she takes the gauntlet back and she goes crazy um and i kind of feel bad because thanos gets a redemption arc uh, and Nebula doesn't in this book. I'm assuming she gets one later. Um, but I really liked how she was used, uh, especially when she came back. I loved the Living Tribunal. When I was a kid, I thought it was the coolest thing. And Eternity as well. Yes. So cool. Yes. Um, if you look in the Living Tribunal sections, um, every time he talks, he doesn't have a word balloon, which is the way of sort of showing he doesn't, he's so powerful, he doesn't have any rules. He can yeah. just, that's just how cool he is. Um, just for a quick frame of reference, August, do you have a, a particular page of the Living Tribunal that I can I can flip my copy to, just so I can kind of share it with Logan? I uh, I believe it was the third issue is when Living Tribunal shows up and then he leaves, um, and Eternity's there too, so it works for both. Yeah, did I just see the Galactus in that? Yes, Galactus is in. I, there. I'm gonna need to I'm gonna need to mute myself for a second to plug in my computer. <laughs> uh, Dad, talk about your favorite. Okay, yeah, uh, they get the cosmic beings together. I think in issue four but you're right logan galacticus is here all the cosmic beings are together to take on to uh take on uh thanos uh okay yeah so Rats. you're right it's uh yeah it is on looks oh, like here we go page oh 101 101 so his words his words are all in green and they don't, yeah, they don't mm -hmm. have any word bubbles. Ah. I want to give credit again to uh, gotcha. Jack Morelli. Uh, letterers are underappreciated in the comic industry. He did great work in this book. Um, yeah. I love uh, Drax the Destroyer, probably is my favorite. Um, <clears throat> that near the end, uh, when they're all scrambling for the gauntlet, Drax grabs and throws down the Hulk accidentally because he's stupid and he, he's just a big lug I love yeah <laughs> because he's just like everyone else is throwing someone down so drax just throws the hulk down too yeah and i love that i don't have a page number on that either but it would be very close to the end if you want to find that <laughs> yeah. um love that guy another one i i liked was mephisto was working in the mm -hmm. background obviously trying to you know work the work thanos into his his favor so he's always the galaxy's greatest widow speak. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He stole it from Wolverine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got nothing on that. <laughs> Widow's Mephisto's Peak comp is too good. Widow's Peak competition between Wolverine and, and Mephisto. <laughs> and then uh, Death, of course, Lady Death, how you know Thanos just won't give up. He's like the he's like the boyfriend that won't quit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh how she betrays him in the end, of course, she turns on him and just crushes Thanos's heart because of that. And so it, it's a just a good, fun story. Yeah, like like Caleb said, there's really not a point to it other than you're just getting, I mean, the ultimate point is you're just getting everybody together. But still, I love how it was well-drawn, well-written, and uh, just looks great, in my opinion. It was one of the best, I think, crossovers in my opinion i don't maybe not the best but definitely one of the my favorites and i'm i'm blinded by nostalgia i'm sure <laughs> it's uh it's it's such a beautifully drawn book from like front to back all the vision like i said i really think it's like uh, a unity of all the greatest creators of the time 
Mm-hmm. From I mean, it's it's rare you get a book that has a triple A writer, a triple A artist, a triple A letterer, and a triple A colorist all coming together. And I think even uh, the the editor, um, I can't remember his name, something Wolf, but he's also really good. Um, Marv Wolfman. So it it really is an all star cast on this book, and it shows. There's the area. What was, where, I'm at what the, was area the editor where again, Matt? Going after. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think it was Marv Wolfman that edited it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, he's. And I, I, I believe that guy has a good career. Uh, yeah. I don't remember offhand, but I, I the name sounds very familiar. To well, me. you know, we so. mentioned Crisis on Infinite Earths over at DC, but George Perez and Marv Wolfman were the creators for that. So. Oh. Okay. If you think about it. Oh really? You know. Yeah. Here, I knew I knew Perez did the art, but. Yeah. Here's you know here's Marvel trying to get, the DC guys to come over and and do an epic, uh, crossover you know, like crisis. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I gotta say, I I definitely like the infinity gauntlet because it kind of goes more in the cosmic realm. I I, I really like secret wars because it was kind of the start of it all. The the fisticuffs, the, the, Hey, let's get, let's just get the six year olds to get their action figures and smash them together and come up with a really cool story that they can play with. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They really, they really dove into the, the really the power that the gauntlet had that's what they really tried to capture with having the cosmic beings there and just the overall infinite power that you're going to get by having the gauntlet they really captured that in my opinion in the book yeah so as logan is scrolling on my tablet through <laughs> every page absorbing every 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 bit of uh of the artwork um so I know the way to the back of the book yeah so yeah. Lo- logan can you tell me a little bit about in the Secret Wars since we've, we've talked about Lee and um, August's characters in uh, Infinity War, Infinity Gauntlet? What was some of your what was some of your favorite characters in the Secret Wars? And please talk into the microphone. You know, uh, my personal favorite is Hulk, but they use Superman so not Superman, he's not in this Spider Man so well that actually. He's also one of my favorites now, so now I'm torn between two because because now his webs are like steel. So he actually like figures out about the X Men's plans and is using his webs to catch them. And he actually has this one girl hanging, and she's trying to break out, and she said, "I can't break out. This is like steel." Hmm. So he's pretty quick as well. Because at one point, Titano is trying to slam him with this, with this huge chunk of metal, and he just dodges it right before she hits him. She's like, how could somebody be that fast? And then he said, how do you think I survived this long? He does have a point there. He does. Good point. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you, Logan. I think out of the Secret Wars, I think the character I like the most is probably Spider-Man, because he's... He's more like a an average an average guy, you know, who just happens to get yeah. some powers and 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 takes the right choices and, and uses them for uh, for a, a great uh, responsibility. It's exactly. my way of m- mashing up the, uh, the classic <laughs> phrase. Yes, exactly. No, he's a great character. I think that's a good character to cling to. No pun Spider-Man, intended. <laughs> Spider-Man, I think represents the. Spider-Man really represents to me the ideal of what Marvel uh, tries to be to distinguish itself from DC, Um, where Marvel wants to create heroes, especially back in the day, that were average, just working class people. Um, You know, Spider-Man, he went to university, he had a job, he had girlfriends, and they would come and go. Um, And then after that, he graduated. And he became an adult. I mean, this is uh, Spider Man, I think, is a lot of people's favorite Marvel hero because he really embodies that in the best way. He's always the most relatable, even in Infinity Gauntlet. Um, yeah. He's, he's just your typical dude, and you can't help but root for him. Oh, yeah. He's your friendly neighborhood Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, that's what mm-hmm. he said when they were introducing themselves. He said, I'm the friendly neighborhood Spider Man. Well, yep. he's not friendly to the enemy, so I don't get why he calls himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, and he wasn't friendly to the X Men either. Yeah, yeah, I think the good guys had a little bit of conflict, if I remember correctly. Yeah, 
And it didn't help that, uh, and it, it was kind of weird because right off the bat, we get Magneto right in with the uh, superheroes and not yeah. in with the villains. So, I know. Yeah, that it, was especially back then. Well, at one point he tries no, to, but they stop him. He's complicated. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. what I like about him. Magneto, he's, he's, he's interesting. Especially back then, that was a pretty big deal to have him <clears throat> be with the, the good guys, especially yeah. back in, was, would that come out 87 or 86? Uh, let me check. I think it's, I think it's an 86 uh, issue. I think it was 86. I'm Here's something sure. really funny I want to tell you. So I read this other book called Zombie Boy, and at this one point, since he's a zombie, he can pretty much do anything. He shoots nose hair out of his nose, and they blow up in the sky as fireworks. And they look like these little squiggly lines. So when I see the magnetic field around Magneto, it looks like the nose hairs. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> what book is that? Zombie Boy. Zombie, Zombie Boy. Boy. I've read a lot I'll of them. It's a, it's a manga. That sounds funny. I like that. Um, it's a manga. It's a manga. Yeah, it's a manga. He actually introduced it to me. I'm like, this is this is like completely weird. The weirdest you know manga book i've ever seen i've backwards i don't get why well as i try to explain to logan how you read manga books you know you read them back to front um yeah yeah so secret wars originally came out in 1984 oh 84 okay. yeah okay so oh wow so yeah you're only 20 years out from the first introduction of spider-man 21 years so and you know about 21 years out from x-men yep so fairly new to have Magneto go to the good side. Huh. Interesting. So, well, um, I think, I think that about ex wraps up the, the, the two books. Um, yeah. Lee or August, is there anything you want to add about uh, the infinity gauntlet before we, we try to kind of wrap everything up? Uh, just check it out. You can get it in trade paperback uh, and, and sit down and read it. I think it's a great story, yeah. great art for anybody that likes comics. I don't think you're going to be disappointed because of the movie or because of any of the other reboots they've done of it. I think regardless of what you've read, I think you'll still like it. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. Yeah, it's, <clears throat> it's definitely trying to do something different from what the movie was trying to do. Uh, and in some ways that's better. And I think that it's, um, you know, very unique. Even if you haven't read a ton of comics, there's not a lot there that would hold you back i think you can pretty quickly catch on to who's the good guy who's the bad guy um, yeah and since it has so overall, since yeah. it has so many iconic characters you'll recognize most of them and since this is kids in comics matt it's kid friendly exactly yeah um so logan is there anything that you want to tell our listeners about the secret wars yeah like my dad mentioned they made spider-man stronger they don't just make Spider-Man stronger, they also make Hawkeye stronger. Because now, he has these boom arrows. And when he shoots it at something, it just blows up. Like there's a little bomb on the end. On the front cover, you can see that little end on there. And he can actually oh. make arrows. Like he was making Hashtag one for, Gal for Hawkeye. Especially for Galactus, when Galactus was starting to set up his thing to devour the planet. Oh, okay. So he has unlimited hmm. arrows? No, he makes arrows. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so yeah, and and Secret Wars, like I said, I read it when I was basically Logan's age, uh, when I was nine, and uh, it's a it's a great comic to introduce to kids about themes of good guys, bad guys, you know, um, why they fight, you know, trying to basically. I am rambling here. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's fine. But yeah, I, I definitely recommend Secret Wars. And I, I would have to say between a grudge match between Secret Wars and Infinity Gauntlet, I, I think hands down they're both the great books. Especially the product of their time. And and like I didn't realize some of the history behind the Mattel and Jim Shooter thing. That's kind of interesting. That makes sense now why there's all this introduction of characters and kind of their classic look that they had. And they really stuck to that for you know years and years after that. Also, the they make this book so long that it actually has a lot to describe of. And actually, they make Ultron really strong too. Oh, yeah. Which is not good because um, Torch just blows up the whole, whole part of the fortress. Just this huge hole. And Ultron's just deactivated without even a dent. 
Yep. From Galactus. He does have this weird, crazy strong armor. He does. He's in Mantium. <coughs> I don't know what that means. It just, it's, it's, it's the same metal that's in Wolverine's Wolverine. skeleton. So he has, he has so. the same armor as Wolverine has, as, as the metal, I guess. Yeah. They even make the art a little bit different. Because Wolverine's originally yellow and blue. And my dad actually pointed out that on the in the book of Secret Wars, he's actually yellow and orange. And he's also that same color on my curtains. And I've actually never noticed that until he pointed that out. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also a really weird part in the book. I think this might be the weirdest part, but... When Galactus is ready to eat the planet, guess what happens? What? What? He eats what? his home. <laughs> and this is Wait, weird. What? Why does he eat his home? That that eating yourself out of house and home is takes on a new meaning, I guess. <laughs> and he just yeah. ate his he just ate his whole spaceship and it was just gone. Nah. Got to love- We're gonna have to, I'm going to introduce some some Fantastic Four to Logan so yeah. he gets a little more on Galactus. Yeah, some Galactus education there. Really? I uh, you know, aside the point, I I uh, I, I guess edit this out later. It doesn't really fit, but I really love the um. Since we're on the topic of Fantastic Four, I would love to to hear his take on the uh, first appearance of the Silver Surfer book. Um, that you know, um, I forget the number, but I'm sure you know which one I'm talking about. Where Galactus shows up? Yeah, I think um, uh, the first Silver Surfer. Appearance? I think it's Fantastic Four, like fifty three. That kind of sticks in my Something head. Like uh huh. Yeah. Don't ask me. Oh, I, that's a good one. The first time I got introduced to the Fantastic Four, so I don't know. Anything. Oh. Really? The only things I know about him is the dad. My is the stuff my dad told me. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's. Like I said, the best thing about this podcast is it's comics with my kids, so I'm I'm introducing a lot of stuff to my kids. So. Thanks to Secret Wars, That's thanks exciting. to thanks to the Infinity Gauntlet, you guys, you you helped me find more stuff that I can I can introduce them to, which means more episodes. Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> awesome. So well, I'm glad. Yeah. Hope you like uh, Infinity Gauntlet, Logan, and I'll have to check out Secret Wars again. It's been a while. Yeah, same. Uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this up, uh, folks. Thanks for listening to the reviews of uh, Secret Wars and Infinity Gauntlet. Uh, Lee, where can everyone listen to to your stuff? You can just go to covertnerd.net and have all my contact information there. So yeah, if you disagree, agree with what we said, get in touch with us. Let me know. So August, where can people hear or find you? Right. I do uh, art on my Instagram at, I believe it's, let me pull it up because I believe it's August Anyway Art on Instagram. And I believe it's August Anyway Art on Twitter. Yes. And yeah, if you want to email me, uh, you, the email address is comicswithmykids at gmail.com. If you want to listen to other episodes of the show, you can catch them on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. And Logan, what's that one that, you like to, that Richard likes to say? Stitcher. This show is part of the EMC Podcast Network and uh, recorded right here at Down Studio in the heartland of the USA. Uh, listener, check out the show notes for all the links to Lee and August as and uh, where you can listen and see some of their stuff. Well, thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you, Logan. Thank you, guys. Thank you.